Thanks to Dashlane for supporting this video. Boeing was the place. I mean, they were the place to work, you know. And oh my God, I, I, it was amazing when I put that Boeing shirt on, how <laughs> my chest puffed out. <laughs> You know, I'd walk into the store around here, and they're like, oh, you work for Boeing? That is awesome, and thank y'all so much, and you just mean so much to this area, you know? Wow. And it was just awesome. And it's just... <sighs> we don't have that anymore here. Nobody does. I mean, everybody I talk to in Boeing, they're, they're embarrassed to work there most of the time. It's just it's, it's gone. Did you ever expect to feel the way that you feel about the company now? Oh, absolutely not. Natalie, I still lose sleep every night. This is an audio clip of the New York Times interviewing a whistleblower at Boeing. They claim that Boeing is systematically neglecting safety standards to meet production deadlines, and in some cases, even using faulty components. This captures, I think, a critical deterioration of Boeing's brand. It was world-renowned, respected, and looked up to, and that respect is slowly crumbling away with its current mismanagement and alleged negligence of safety standards. I've covered various aspects of Boeing's businesses in depth over the years on this channel. The Space Shuttle Orbiter is built by Boeing decades ago that changed our view of space travel. The Space Launch System has also been in focus since it's a direct competitor to SpaceX Falcon Heavy, and it's another example of the government inefficiency. More recently, I talked about the Boeing 737 accident and Boeing's numerous mismanagement that caused it. Needless to say, I'm quite interested in Boeing's businesses. That's why I'm very intrigued to find out that Boeing, with all those troubles and perceived incompetencies, continues to perform and outperform all of its competitors, making record revenue in 2018 and on track to do the same in 2019. The early years of Boeing were very entrepreneurial. Just like any other small businesses, Boeing had to make do with the limited resources. In 1915, Boeing hired its first engineer, Zhu Wang, a Chinese graduate at MIT who designed Boeing Model 2, the aircraft that brought Boeing's first financial success. Its orders from the Navy carried Boeing through its toughest times. Later on, Boeing's fate were completely tied to the turbulent global conflicts. The two world wars brought Boeing its fastest growth, but at the same time, it was also followed by its worst layoffs of 70,000 workers at Boeing factory due to canceled orders after the war. From 1945 onwards, Boeing's engineering prowess grew significantly leading to the creation of the legendary B-47 and B-52 bombers, which until today are flying above the gulfs of the Middle East. But that wasn't good enough for Boeing. Only in 1969 did Boeing's 747s lay the foundation of Boeing's engineering supremacy and its continued commercial success. With the vastly more economical 737s, Boeing's commercial business slowly surpassed its military contracts, which led us to today. Boeing making $100 billion in 2018. To put Boeing's businesses into perspective, by 2018, Boeing has four lines of businesses that make the bulk of its revenue. It's BCA, commercial airplane businesses, BDS, defense, space, and security business, Boeing Global Services, as well as Boeing Capital. Under BCA, Boeing makes commercial airliners include its legendary wide-body 747s along with other commonly used commercial airliners such as 737 and 787. For BDS, Boeing mainly focuses on making military aircrafts, state-of-the-art rockets, as well as missiles. The business is relatively small comparing to BCA, but it is also more stable, as Boeing has the United States government as its biggest client. BGS provides support services such as training pilots and servicing existing Boeing equipments. And lastly, Boeing Capital helps companies and governments around the world afford the often very expensive Boeing products. These four branches of businesses made $100 billion in revenue in 2018, roughly equivalent to the combined GDP of Laos, Estonia, and Macau. And it ranks 62nd on the country's GDP list, just above Venezuela. Its commercial airplane business alone makes $60.1 billion that are equivalent to the GDP of Uruguay. Needless to say, 
Boeing's financial success is due very much to its successful airline businesses, 60% to be precise. This brought us to the gist of the problem. Boeing 737s are under international scrutiny over its safety issues, and Boeing scandals are only symptoms to a larger systematic problem. Not limited to its commercial airliner business, but has plagued the entire company, including its inability to produce desirable results with its rocket businesses. But here's the real danger for Boeing. It might never need to change a thing because of its unique position in the various markets. Boeing's two biggest businesses are its commercial airline businesses and its government businesses. But in both markets, there's high entry barrier, few competitors, and therefore low incentive to improve. Efficiency is not the main driver like in any other industry. Legacy, patronage, and clientelism is. That's why the $17 billion space launch system has been in the works for almost a decade and is still far from being finished. This is a chart of Boeing's various competitors based on the amount of money that's on the line. In the commercial airplane market, it's Airbus. In defense market, it's Lockheed Martin, General Dynamics, United Technologies, and Northrop Grumman. And in the space industry, it's SpaceX, Lockheed Martin, and Northrop Grumman. It is not hard to see that because Boeing is a highly controlled tech and capital intensive industry, it has limited competition, and its incentive to improve is very limited as well. The entry barrier is so high that with $100 million, SpaceX was only able to buy a standing ticket, and it was almost dead in 2008 financial crisis. Elon Musk, the founder of SpaceX, almost lost everything at the time. This is the first roadblock that stops Boeing from improving. It just doesn't have a lot of reason to. The second reason is market leadership. This needs to be discussed together with a high entry barrier. Boeing is in markets that are usually controlled by few players. Therefore, they have the ability to set the price and ability to negotiate with the government for a better deal. The defense industry is not governed by the rules in the business world as compared to any normal businesses. For one thing, when a country buys Boeing's missiles and aircrafts, it does not necessarily plan to use it. It's more often a deterrence measure and a show of commitment to the U.S. partnership. This makes the bulk of Boeing's defense businesses terribly easy. It does not need to improve the product, and its customers still are willing to pay billions of dollars for them. This got us to the last point, government support. A very opportune example is the current ongoing trade negotiation between the United States and China. Reportedly, buying $10 billion worth of Boeing commercial airplane is one of the negotiation terms. When Trump visited China in 2017, she also led a deal that bought 300 Boeing aircrafts. This is an unusual support of the United States government to a privately owned company. But this also caused Boeing to focus too much on the politics and less on improving its products and processes. This will be fine when there is little competition and no accidents, but when accidents like the recent Boeing 737 crushes happen, all the years of complacency and bureaucracy are exposed. However, I don't believe the simple idea that Boeing's too rigid or bureaucratic. Engineering is still very much in Boeing's blood. It just needs some jolting. If you look at Boeing's leadership, its group CEO is an aerospace engineer who's been an engineer for most of his life. Its BCA business CEO is also an engineer, and so is its BDS business CEO. It does show the commitment of Boeing to improving its engineering processes and its commitment to making better and more competitive products. Boeing can't change the fact that it is the market leader or there is high entry barrier or they have the support of the United States government but what it can't change is its culture, and most importantly, its incentive structure so that everyone in Boeing can work together to make better and safer products and be rewarded as such, rather than to make friends with a congressman or a senator. Boeing in history has always been the crown jewel of the United States companies. With proper reform, I'm sure it could restore its former glory. But what's required then is its leadership letting go of short-term profit incentives to pursue engineering excellence in the long term. Change is constant in our society nowadays. Boeing's business has to go through tremendous changes with its current turmoil and the future challenges from the Chinese aircraft maker, Comac. We also need to be aware of the changes around us and protect our online identity as internet becomes an integral part of our lives. That's why I'm recommending Dashlane to you. 
With Dashlink's US patented local encryption storage system, not only can you update and manage your passwords with ease from all your devices, you can be sure that when a data breach happens that threatens the safety of your online identity, Dashlane will keep you informed so you can't rectify the situation right away. Additionally, Dashlane also provides a VPN service that again keeps your online identity safe when using public or untrusted Wi-Fi networks. Dashlane is the easiest way to protect yourself from personal account hacks and sophisticated phishing scams. Click on the link down below to get a free trial of Dashlane Premium for 30 days. And if you like it, you can use the code CuriousElephant to get 10% off Dashlane Premium.